Well, hello again from Kingston. It's been an exciting week. Behind me, you can possibly see Coco paving out here, putting an asphalt surface on the multi-use pathway. But next week's going to be more exciting because on Saturday the 24th, the city are opening the multi-use pathway for one day from 10 till three so that the public can visit and see just how the project is going. Be sure and be there. I'll look forward to seeing you. And in the meantime, enjoy the update and I'll catch you at the end. Thanks for watching. We'll go through last week's events one day at a time, but it's important to know that on the weekend, Hanko were busy cleaning the bridge, which led to a situation on Monday with the sealant primer already out to span six, awaiting waterproofing attention. We'll come back to waterproofing later, but we'll begin on the east end with Sousa's curbing of the approach to the east abutment. Monday saw concrete poured as well on the final expansion joint at the east abutment. the river's edge, moving the crane back indicated the start of further work to remove sections of the remaining trestle. Nearby, even as the pour on the expansion joint continued, the bar construction team were busy preparing the approach to the abutment. Before we leave Monday, I have to mention the amazing crew who've been working wonders on bracket removal from the bridge buggies. Tuesday was a particularly wet day, but trestle work continued Piles were readied for removal and the vibrating hammer was positioned. And then the slow, steady pull of the lift began. Despite the appalling conditions, work on removing brackets continued. And if the rain didn't get some workers wet enough, using a pressure washer to clean the columns under the piers certainly would. A big push to remove gravel was also clear. Wednesday saw the team from Black Rose Waterproofing return to work on the main spans. By late afternoon, they had clearly made significant progress. Over on the east end, Coco Paving arrived to lay asphalt in the gap that had existed between Lower Gore Road and the east abutment. The trestle crew was not idle, raising a series of piles. The hammer may give you an idea how difficult it can be to undo some of the shackles. The work on the trestle leads to a steady series of removals. Concrete was poured that afternoon to complete the median walls on some of the later concrete spans.
It was a significant sign of progress when the bridge buggies were moved from span 17 to span 18, the steel half arch. It shouldn't be overlooked either that at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, this greeted the paving work. Thursday set a bit of a record for the number of flatbed trucks arriving and departing, all of them removing the large green girders taken from the trestle. With the new paving down, there was still lots of work on the east end, and Black and MacDonald were busy completing the last pieces of embedded installed equipment on the bridge. Team members were also installing conduit on the approach to the west abutment. There's evidence too of tidying up across the board, perhaps in advance of the open day. A real sign of progress though, even as more of the dividing wall was poured above, was the complicated and challenging task of removing the safety catwalks from around Pier 17. At the other end of the bridge, waterproofing was making advances too. Work on the trestle left us in this situation on Thursday afternoon. Friday's main event was the reappearance of Coco Paving to lay the multi-use pathway on the east side. That done, they set about putting a second lift or layer on the area first paved on Wednesday. With that complete, to my surprise at least, they saddled up and headed for the West End, where they will do very much the same on Monday. It will come as no great surprise, I'm sure, to hear that yet another concrete pour occurred on Friday afternoon. Though there was a moment or two to wait while the asphalt paving finished. On this occasion, the dividing wall was poured over the expansion joint at Pier 20. You may remember we started the week with waterproofing primer down to span six. Well, the Black Rose crew had covered practically all that area by Friday afternoon. And they were going strongly. Does that mean that we'll see more primer laid this weekend? Well, only time will tell. One thing's for sure. This is the week that removing gravel from the temporary causeway got real. The paving work and other circumstances probably led to a bit of a standstill on the trestle on Friday, but we'll have a look at it as we go to wildlife.
Well, it's been a good week this week. If you ignore a little bit of rain here and there. I don't know how much longer it'll continue. Fall colours are beginning to show. But the highlight next week is definitely going to be the open day at the bridge. If you can make it, please get there. But come by public transport, bicycle or on foot. If you can, parking's going to be very limited. I'm really pleased you've watched this update. If you enjoy them, do consider subscribing. I value every subscription. And in the meantime, until next Saturday, have a great week. See you then. Bye for now.